Bay Caribbean acts on behalf of a number of companies in the United Kingdom. West Indies Freight, Britling Cargo, and these are two of the main ones, but we have smaller companies that we operate and we consolidate. What we say, we would say consolidate because they would say in a shipment that have many, many consignees and Bay Caribbean has to organize this, con this shipment so that each consignee can clear their goods in a timely manner. So we are very concerned that customers who ship through us can clear their goods in a timely manner. Because at the port, when goods arrive at the port, once the containers are unstocked, customers have five working days to clear their goods. After that, the port charges extra storage, which we call rent, and the port really doesn't care much as to the reason why the goods are not cleared. They would charge you rent once that five free working days is over. And once the working days are over, every single day rent is charged, whether it's a public holiday, weekend, whatever. So Bay Caribbean finds that we would do everything in our power to ensure that customers have the ability to clear their goods within the five day period. Of course, there are times when persons for whatever reason would not clear their goods and would have to go and deal with port for the extra charge. But Bay Caribbean tries our very best to make sure that it's never because we didn't do what we were supposed to do, okay? Bay Caribbean finds itself very often as advisors. So we welcome persons to our office where we can sit down with them and discuss and explain to them the processes involved, whether it's to ship their cargoes from the United Kingdom, whether it's to clear the goods when the cargo arrives, whatever. And so the Caribbean is one of the, and maybe it is the only company in Grenada that you can come between let's say seven in the morning and seven or 7.30 in the evening and find somebody here who is willing to listen and help. And that's one of the reputation that we keep and we are proud of that we are not hell bent or rigid in terms of like in most cases, some people, eight to four, no. Four o'clock is not the Caribbean closing time. You come six o'clock and you find the Caribbean. You come Sunday morning and you can find the Caribbean. You come Sunday afternoon to the Caribbean. Yeah. You call Bay Caribbean seven o'clock this evening and somebody will answer the phone and will answer the phone in the most pleasant manner and will stay on the phone with you as long as it's necessary, whether it goes to 7.30 or to eight o'clock. So, yeah. That's really good to know. And I've already got some gems of wisdom from you already because I didn't know that you had to clear within five days. 
I'm like, oh, it's, it's at the port. I can pick it up whenever I want. I didn't realize that there are charges that, that rack up, which is why it's so important to work with a broker. Because for those of us coming from the UK or the US, when it comes to ordering stuff or shipping stuff, it's so much more simple because you just, you have the Royal Mail, you have Amazon, you have, it's, it's quite simple. But I think for when it comes to moving to the Caribbean to understand how to navigate all of the sort of, different elements that come in with shipping items it's really important to, to work with someone who understands the field fully but let, let me take it back a little bit further what exactly is a customs broker and what does a customs broker do why might people even need one okay um to clear many shipments the the uh, the ordinary person would not be able to assess the customs system. It's just like you need a, a certified lawyer to represent you in court. And even if somebody has the skill and the expertise, but doesn't have the certificate, they would not be allowed to come in court to represent you. Something similar to that, a doctor needs that medical certificate to be able to practice medicine. To be able to assess the custom system and to prepare certain custom document, the customs insists that only a certified broker would be able to get onto their system and to prepare that document that you need. So for instance, if you have to make what ordinarily we would call an entry, but what customs would call a declaration so that you can clear your shipment, one has to be able to assess, get onto the custom system to prepare that document. If you are not a recognized broker, you would not be able to get onto the system. It's not something that you can take a pen and paper and just write, okay? So the broker is one who is able, which first and foremost should be knowledgeable in terms of what you as a, an importer or an as an exporter needs to have. The broker needs to know the rules concerning importation and or exportation of goods, because there are certain goods that require additional work. For instance, if you brought in a simple item like clothing, there's nothing that you need specifically. But let's say you want to bring in something like a plant, piece of yam, piece of dashin or something like that. Then that piece of yam or dashin would not, you would not be able to clear that Yamadashi, unless, let's say in our case, you have to go to the agriculture department, provide them with information, prepare the document, but all of that document to do that is done on the same custom system. So you as a member of the general public would not be able to go onto the system to prepare that document. The broker, has to know that what he needs to do. So he can't just he take you to the port to clear your dashing or yam, simply show up. No, that wouldn't happen. There are certain goods that require license for different reasons. And the broker has to know what goods require license, how to apply for the license 
and such, such a like. Okay. The broker also has to be familiar with, let's say, and I know this is one of your big concern, the returning nationals, what they are entitled to. Okay, unfortunately, many do not understand what is available to the returning national. What is available? And some persons who should not be paying some monies to customs end up paying monies to customs simply because of lack of knowledge on the part of them and on the part of the broker that they might have. Okay. And we definitely want to go into the returning nationals details as part of this. But one of the things that I really want to know is say I'm, I'm in the UK, I'm ready to move to Grenada or I'm moving to Grenada in six months time. At what point do I need to engage someone like you? And at what levels, if I'm shipping a barrel, do I need a customs broker? If I'm shipping a container, like when do I need a, when does everyone need a customs broker? Every individual need a customs broker. And at what point do you decide if and when you need one? No, um, the answer to that is probably no and yes. I would think that you need a cost, you need a, to engage a custom broker prior to any shipment so that you fully understand. It doesn't mean that you would need him to clear that shipment, but at least you would know what to do and how to do. For instance, you might ship a simple barrel. Now, what's the barrel? A barrel doesn't say anything of the contents. A barrel is simply what you're going to put goods in. Normally, when we see a barrel, we think foodstuff, probably a bit of clothing, maybe a small appliance or two. But a barrel could have anything in it. A barrel could be, could have commercial stuff. Now, if you send what we would ordinarily call an ordinary barrel, for simplicity, we say an ordinary barrel, basically some food stuff, a little clothing, nothing to talk about. That doesn't require a custom broker at all. You can come collect the document at Bay Caribbean, pay Bay Caribbean, a small fee that we charge, go over to the port and, and clear your barrel. And if, if it's not busy, within 20 minutes, half an hour, you're in and out of the port, okay? But suppose that barrel, upon examination, customs realize, oh, but all you have there is clothes and it's things to sell. It's the same barrel, and that's a whole different matter. You now we're talking, they would say it's commercial, you need a broker, okay? They will ask you for your invoices and things like that. They will want to get a document that shows how much you pay to ship because they know in Grenada, the duties are charged on the CIF cost insurance and free. So the cost of the items added to the insurance, if it's insured, added to the freight, which is the cost of shipping, okay? Now, let's assume that you had a barrel of that nature, but you had not, you had never talked to a custom broker. So you didn't know, you thought if the barrel is here, you can just go to the port and then you find that you stop. So now you have to go and try to get invoices, try to get the shipping costs and everything. And you'd find very often, because remember we have five days, five days, and because you are not prepared for that, sometimes it takes you a lot more than five days to be able to get what is needed. If you are engaged a custom broker, 
from the, before your ship. And he said to Book of Begs, well, I have a barrel of clothes coming down. It's for sale. Begs can tell you, well, make sure you have your invoices. Make sure you have the cost of shipping and such a like. So when you come, everybody knows. So we go to the, cost, to the port and you have your invoices already. You have, as a matter of fact, if you have all the invoices and everything that is needed, the broker can prepare that document be before you even go set foot on the port. So he prepares that you have the document. That document can be prepared even before the goods arrive. Even before the goods arrive, the document can be prepared. The duties could be paid, everything. So when the goods come, you go over to the court and the customs would reserve the right to examine the goods or not. So sometimes they don't even ask to examine the goods. The duties are paid, the documents are presented to customs. They are happy with the document. They, they release the goods. You go to the shed. You don't have to open the package sometimes and you collect your package and you go. So that's what I'm seeing. A broker should be engaged. Okay. You don't want, for instance, even if you have a barrel and then you have certain items in the barrel that might be on a negative list or certain items that might require Bureau of Standard work or the Ministry of Agriculture. If you engage a broker very early and you said, I have this in my barrel, the broker can say to you, well, you know, make sure you have to get these done prior to going to the port. And so you can save a lot of time. And remember, like I said, we always remember that after five, the five free days, port is going to charge you rent regardless of the reason for the delay. Okay? So the broker can be used as an advisor even before you ship. So you call the broker and you say, and the broker can tell you, okay, what you have there is fine. There is no problem. The broker, even before you ship, the broker can give you an idea of what your duties to the government would be. So you say to the broker, well, I have such and such. And before I go further here, I can tell you, outside there, for some strange reason, there seems to be a lot of misinformation. And the, the sad thing is that very often, we the brokers have to give the correct information at a time when it's a bit on the late side. So you still have persons bringing vehicles, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 years old, and expect to get concession on them because some of them are, mi are misinformed outside there. And the 10 years that are spoken about has nothing to do with concession. So persons bringing their vehicles and the vehicles five years and they might be a returning national and they expect to get concession. And then they are told, sorry, no concession is given to on vehicles above four years old. And instead of getting a concession where you should be paying maybe 30 or $40,000 to clear, there is no concession. You have to pay 70 or 80,000. And, you know, so the broker is absolutely necessary. Right. Okay, even if just advise me. Yeah. yeah, and I think that's one of the things that feels overwhelming to people when they think about shipping, whether it's from the UK or the US, it seems to be that uncertainty. It's like, how will this be classified? What will this be valued at? Even when it comes to secondhand or used items, um, it's, I, as someone who's been to the port myself, it's a sort of, you, you never know what the final figure is going to be. And it shouldn't really be that way because there is as a, a catalog, whatever, a book that you can refer to that has all the facts and figures, but, I guess coming to a broker beforehand, explaining exactly what you have 
it reduces that, like, uh, how much am I going to be hit with, sort of feeling. Yeah. One of the years ago, years ago, that was something that they sort of worked with. Today is different, and I tell you why. In the early days, where custom valuation was done by under what was called the Brussels arrangement, where market values were used to determine the value of an item. But the W Trade Organization has since recognized that the market value system is unfair. It's unfair to the person who, through their skill, skill of negotiation, can get a better value and therefore shouldn't be punished because of this, that skill. So I went, walked into a store and I got a fridge for $5,000. And you walk in and you are a very good negotiator and you get the fridge for $4,000. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be punished because you are a good, you know, negotiator. So what the WTO has since decided that valuation would be done on the price paid or payable. So once you can establish that this is the price that you pay or have to pay, customs really have no choice but to accept that price. However, many persons do not know that. And that's where partly the broker should come in. Also, customs reserve the right to ask one to be able to kind of prove that's what you really paid. Mm -hmm. Again, if you touch a broker early enough, the broker, and he said to the broker, well, I want to bring in such and such, the broker can ask you, uh, advise you to pay for it in a manner that provides some kind of evidence. So there's certain things like maybe a credit card, bank wire, that you have a piece of paper that says you did pay this for this, you know, some things like that, rather than, okay, you just walk in and say, well, I paid that or else I paid it. And strangely, I paid it with cash because customs always say that you cannot prove that you paid something. You paid that amount in cash, even if you have a receipt. What they say is that um, you could ask the person to write you a receipt for any amount. You could pay at 10,000 and you tell them write a receipt for five, you know? So we would advise persons based on the item, particularly something like a vehicle, because the average duty on a vehicle, a used vehicle is like 160, 160% of the cost insurance and freight value. So 160%, you, if you get a real deal, you want to make sure that customs accept that deal and so you want this, you want this to bring in a night something that will establish the customs that that's exactly what you paid. And the truth is, once you can prove what you paid for it, customs really have no choice but to, to work with it. Okay. And again, chains where you have where you have the broker, because customs sometimes will want to argue. No, that's not the, what you paid for it. That is, you know, that price is too low. That price is too low. No, no price is too low. No price is too high. If that's what you pay, that's what you pay. And if you are a good broker, a good broker will say to customs, my client, that's what they paid. My client is not going to pay a cent more than that, duties on that, and 
advise the client. That's what you paid. You show that's what you paid. We are not moving, not even by one cent. If that's what you paid. That is what you paid. So sometimes, depends on the broker you have. Sometimes the broker will, you know, timid. Will be very, very timid. You know, kind of afraid. You know, if that's what the person paid, that's what they paid. 